Hi, my name is Tichomir and welcome to the first Temporal Community Support Ask and Learn video series. In these videos, we pick one of your questions that you have asked in our community forum, provide an answer, and all learn together. So for this particular question, uh, a user asked us uh, how to find the elapsed times and start a workflow execution. So basically, this user wants to make a decision to invoke an activity. Uh, and this decision has to be made by uh, finding out the elapsed time since workflow execution started. And based on this time, they want to decide again if they want to, for example, invoke an activity or a child workflow or do some sort of other types of business logic in their workflow code. So to answer this question, we have to kind of take a look at two separate things. And to describe these, let's take a look at how the interaction kind of works between the client applications, the temporal server, and your code or your services that host your temporal workers, workflows, activities, and things like that. The first thing that we're going to look at is the client making a request to uh, start, create, and start a workflow execution. This is a gRPC request that uh, gets sent from the client, and you can use any of the temporal SDKs um, APIs to, to make this type of uh, request. And in this case, we want to um, start some sort of transfer, revocation, start creation um, of an execution of a transfer workflow. Typically, the information that the client sends to the server includes different things like a business level workflow ID, the workflow type that the user wants to um, <clears throat> uh, start and, and execute and a thing called a task queue name or an endpoint um, on the temporal server uh, that um, this particular execution should be created. Within the temporal server, a lot of things happen internally, but on a high level, the first thing that the server does, it creates the workflow execution. This creation means that within the temporal server, we're going to create this execution. Temporal includes a lot of transaction, management on storing this information to the database, making sure everything is, 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 is created. And this is the first time uh, or the first time that we're going to look at for the question. This is the time the execution is created on the server. Um, after this execution has been actually created, Temporal Server creates dynamically a task queue, which is uh, based on the name of what was provided by the client information when uh, the start transfer request was received. And it's going to put a workflow task on this task queue. Now looking down uh, on your code or your services, um, most likely you have a worker that's actually going to listen on the same task queue that this workflow task is being placed on. The worker who which long poles this particular task queue on the server is going to go ahead and pick up the task. And it's going to see that this particular workflow task involves uh, having to start the workflow execution per, you know, temporal server, uh, you know, information in this workflow task. And it's going to start executing your workflow code. And this is the second time that we're going to look at for this particular question, which is the time the workflow code is executed. So these are two different times. And from the user question, we can say, okay, look, it really depends on what you mean. If you want to make your business decision in your workflow code to, let's say, invoke an activity or a child workflow uh, based on some time, you have to understand which time do you want. Do you want the time since when the execution was created on the server, or do you want the time that your actual workflow code was executed? or started executing. And let's take a look at code or a possible implementation. We're going to provide this particular implementation in Java and Go, so using the Java and Go temporal SDKs. For Java, we, this is our workflow implementation class, and the exec method is our workflow method, meaning this is the code that's going to be executed when your workers have picked up the workflow task from the server, and want to start the workflow execution. Inside your workflow code, we can really get both times. For the time since workflow execution was created on the server, we can 
take the workflow dot current millis, which is going to give us our current workflow time, and we can subtract this workflow get info dot get run started timestamp in millis. So within the workflow code, you have access to both the current workflow time as well as the time that um, the workflow execution was created on the server. And this is also reflected if you look at your workflow history as well. Um, so in order to find the time since workflow execution was created on the server, we can take workflow.current milliseconds, which is our current workflow time, and subtract it from the time where our actual execution was started on the server. If we're looking for the time since the workflow code execution started itself, we can, as soon as our workflow method starts, we can store, let's say, for example, current workflow time using workflow.current millis. And some later on, after we do some processing, after we do some <coughs> orchestration in our workflow code, when we actually want to make this decision, whether or not, for example, as the user asked to run an activity or not, we can again call workflow the current milliseconds to get the current time right there before we have to make the decision and subtract our uh, current workflow time variable, which we have stored uh, previously as soon as our workflow method uh, started its execution. So these are the two ways to do it with Java. If we look at Go code, it's really the same thing, just a little bit different uh, API. So we have a my workflow function here. This is a workflow function and the same thing. We have workflow.now that takes in a context and we can subtract for him workflow.get info workflow start time. And these are the two <coughs> times and, the, and here we can find out the times this workflow uh, execution was created on the server and similarly for two meaning the time since workflow code execution started or your workflow method function uh, started executing we can do the same thing we get the current time or the current workflow time when our uh, workflow function starts and then at some later point in time we can subtract we can get it again and subtract the one we have stored previously. All right, so that's the answer for this question. Um, I hope we all learned something and you learned something and you got something from this. Again, um, join our community and if you want your question to be featured in one of these videos, go ahead to communitytemporal.io and ask your question. And let's see. All right, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.